Hey friends, happy Thursday. Welcome back to Hot News. Hope you're enjoying your life. And in case you didn't know it, we have a video sponsor for today, so let's roll that. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. This is a new year. You're gonna to wanna to develop new skills to progress yourself as you're going throughout 2020 to make sure when you look back, you're like, oh yeah, I had 2020 vision because I improved myself this year. Whether you wanna learn things in photography, illustration, animation, video production, web design, business, all of that kind of stuff, you can do so over at Skillshare with your classes because they have dozens of different topics and thousands of different classes that you can check out. Personally, I'm investing in the Productivity Masterclass, creating a custom system that works because I personally believe that my biggest bottleneck to success is myself. And so if I can get around all the habits and ticks that screw me up, I might actually be able to be successful one day. And maybe you can too by joining Skillshare and being part of a community of people who are looking to just learn a new skill, learn something for their career, or just dibble and dabble in new things. That's something that you could do too as well. And on top of all that, it's extremely affordable with classes coming in at less than $10 a month for an annual membership. So it won't hurt your wallet either. So check out the link in the video description to get two months for free with our Skillshare link. And you can, two months for free, a free learning. That's, that's, that's a great price. It's free real estate in your brain. It's the season of quarterly earnings, my friends, yes. Everybody's talking about how much money they made or didn't make and why they did or didn't make enough money for Wall Street to be happy. And AMD is no different. They reported their Q4 earnings as well as their year earnings for 2019. And we got some good information out from them, including Dr. Lisa Su talking about what's coming to the Navi lineup in 2020. She's already confirmed that big Navi should be unveiled at some point this year. Whether or not it would be released is not necessarily sure, but she did happen to mention that we would be getting a refresh of Navi this year, as well as next gen RDNA this year. But what that actually means for consumers isn't quite clear. By the way that Lisa Sue was talking, it made it seem like it was just going to be something that was more of a small iterative update, kind of like going from an RX 480 to a 580, which is not something that we would necessarily want to see, especially with all the big promises that have been coming out about AMD shaking up 4K gaming and big Navi coming. Just getting a refresh isn't exactly what we're going for. However, it does appear that Tom's Hardware did get some clarification from AMD with regarding what they mean by the word refresh. And it does look like they're not refreshing the lineup of what's there, but rather adding new products. The reason this is so confusing is because Lisa Su said in 2019, we launched her new architectures and GPUs. It's the RDNA architecture, and that was the Navi-based products. You should expect those will be refreshed in 2020. AMD has been refreshing things. That's actually one of the reasons why we were so expectant of Navi is because we got the RX 480, then the 580, then the 580X, because they had to refresh it for just OEM manufacturers it wasn't actually anything new and then we got a 590 which was technically a refresh it does appear that this is going to be a new set of cards that are going to be launched in the same sort of lineup that's existing so the rx 5700 series might see a new gpu added into the stack rather than getting the rx 5700 xt version 2 or something like that obviously it is slightly concerning that they're talking about a refresh because it doesn't look like they're necessarily looking to advance things as far as consumers would want in order for them to compete with nvidia but it does also look like it's more than just the typical refresh that we've seen in previous years from AMD's GPU division. What this will mean, obviously, we'll have to wait until the rest of the year to see if it pans out, see if at Computex or any other of the other major trade shows we would get a new launch from them. But it doesn't seem super great. However, their financial report seemed super great to me unless you're Wall Street, and then it was slightly disappointing. Anyways, AMD's revenue was up 50% year over year, 2018 to 2019, a 50% increase in revenue. And then from Q3 to Q4, they saw an increase of 18% of revenue. Obviously with Ryzen 3000 launching in Q3, they had a whole lot of time to sell CPUs in Q4 and then just bolster their sales that way with basically hardware being one of the number one drivers in their increase in revenue. AMD obviously delivering a ton of performance per dollar, which is allowing them to be more accessible to the general consumer, which means that they're earning more money, even if it's not as much money as people 
we're expecting them to earn. But in case you're getting tired of the talk of AMD and Intel as being the only two CPU options for general consumers or enthusiasts, well, my friends, you only have to wait till March to get a third option if you live in China, because apparently Xiaoxin is looking to launch their Keishan KX6780A. I can't pronounce Chinese words. Anyways, this is the eight core 16 thread CPU processor that we reported CPU processor. I'm being redundant today. That we reported on this in hot news a few months ago. Anyways, it looks like while they've been selling this to various vendors, it now might actually come out to actual consumers who can purchase it at retail stores in China. This is based on TSMC 16 nanometer process. So it's behind by a few generations, even by Intel standards. Standards. And the performance has been compared to probably about a fourth or fifth gen Intel i5 processor. And one of the things that you'll have to be concerned with about this is that it's neither LGA or PGA CPU. It's actually BGA, which is ball grid array, which means that it's soldered to the motherboard. So anytime you want to update your processor, you got to buy a whole new motherboard. Anyways, in case you want a third CPU option, this is going to happen. This is coming because VIA Technologies and the Chinese government are working to develop an x86 CPU, which x86 is the contract that Intel owns that they licensed to AMD and VIA, which are the only companies that can make x86 CPUs. And now it's coming out in the product of this. And hopefully it'll be available on like AliExpress or something so we can get one shipped over here to the US so we can check it out. But let's get back to the main people in the CPU game, which is Intel. It looks like in ASRock software for their Polychrome Sync, they've unveiled the fact that there will be Z490 and H470 motherboards coming out, including a Z490 Aqua, as well as a Z490 Tai Chi and ITX. You can check out the list that we've linked down below in the description if you're interested in that. But the more interesting thing coming out of Intel is it looks like the Lakefield SKU has appeared. The i5 L16G7, which if the 10980XE or the 10900K isn't hard enough for you to say, adding in letters and numbers is apparently going to be the way for Intel to go moving forward. The reason that this is actually of note is because Lakefield is supposed to be one of their first heterogeneous CPUs which means they're using varied cores. It's supposed to have one high-powered Sunny Cove CPU and then four smaller Tremont low-powered cores. This is something that's been going on in phones for a while now, but hasn't actually been available on x86 platforms. So this could be cool. This could be a new product lineup that comes out to Ultrabooks where you can actually get single core performance, but then also lower end multi-core efficiency for better battery life. This could open up a whole new product stack. We'll see what this actually looks like. The name sucks though. Please Please don't put letters and numbers and mix them up like that. It's just going to be so hard to say. I hate it. I hate it. I hate algebra because they started putting letters with my math. Have you ever wanted to view a system at 20K? Well, now you can with Matrox. They've unveiled their new GPUs that are coming out in partnership with NVIDIA, which they're capable of putting out 64 display signals of up to 10 VP at 60 frames per second, which in case you can't do the math quickly enough, that's half a trillion pixels a second. Half a trillion pixels a second. That's an, that's an insane amount. You do this by merging them together with the Matrox cards and then they're like combiner things and then it can put everything out in 4K 60 and like it's supposed to be meant for video walls and you can have a 20K video wall. It'd be amazing. Linus, get these to display your thing. Although there's probably going to be like little to no gaming performance. So... It's probably not good. Speaking of little to no gaming performance, let's talk about the Nintendo Switch because there's new rumors coming out about the refresh we might be expecting later this year for a Nintendo Switch Pro. It's actually quite intriguing because it's supposed to have 4K support, which would be great for content consumption on a TV when it's in dock mode. But then massive performance improvements are likely to come as well because the speculation, which again, this is all a rumor at this point, is that it's going to be based on NVIDIA's Volta architecture. This is something that's quite intriguing to me because it would actually line up with how the original Switch launched. In case you're not familiar, the original Switch's SOC was based on Maxwell architecture architecture, which by the time it launched was several generations old at that point. It wasn't very new. So Nintendo going with an older NVIDIA architecture is still something that is in their wheelhouse for what they've done. They could actually have reasons for doing this. I'm not quite sure. It could also potentially mean that they would have tensor cores. I doubt it. But uh, no ray tracing capability is likely to come from this Volta on a Nintendo Switch Pro. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments.
And the last little bit of gaming news, it looks like Unity has updated itself to support Stadia development, which would mean that anybody who has a Unity game could easily port over to Google Stadia, which would mean more games potentially. We'll see how this actually plays out because game selection is one of the critical downfalls of Google Stadia at this point, on top of the latency issues, on top of the fact that you're not getting the actual resolution and performance that you're supposed to be getting. Anyways, that's... You, you take that with uh, with what you will, Unity on Google Stadia. And speaking of what you will, do you like music? Bad segue, MIDI 2.0, in case you thought that the MIDI system needed a new certification in 35 years, well, people agree with you, and it's supposed to introduce two-way communication, precision timing, and up to 32 bits of resolution. I actually don't know a whole lot about the MIDI system, so I'm not gonna comment any further, but MIDI 2.0 should be available in its first device probably in March of this year. Speaking of devices and things being available, apparently Google, at least according to an APK decompile that people have rummaged through, is that it could allow you to record and transcribe your phone calls that you have with the Android phone app. Obviously, recording phone calls is illegal depending on the context in which you do it. If you don't notify the other party in certain states, you have to inform them. In other states, it's a, like as long as you consent, it's fine. So Google is gonna preface it by making sure that you know the legal obligations of where you're doing it and that's okay, but then also transcription for anybody who needs to take notes during a meeting could be something that's actually really helpful. Speaking of really helpful, the community was really helpful to Google because it announced that it paid out over six and a half million dollars in 2019 to its bug bounty program, which is over double what it's done in its highest year previous. $6.5 million to people who can hunt bugs. It's delicious. Speaking of bugs, let's talk about baked in bugs that Ring has put into their systems. Uh, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, the EFF, has found that the Ring app is actually porting out data to five different companies, those companies being Facebook, Branch, AppsFlyer, Mixpanel, and Google-owned Crashlytics. This is not necessarily something that people who have the Ring app would uh, know about. It indicates that your private data is being shipped out to companies that you maybe were not aware of. This is also coming on the heels of a Medium post by an Amazon software engineer known as Max Eliaser, who said that the Ring company should be shut down immediately because the deployment of connected home security cameras that allow footage to be queried centrally are simply not compatible with a free society. The privacy issues are not fixable with regulation and there is no balance that can be struck. Ring should be shut down immediately and not brought back. What do you think of this? Are you okay with the Ring cameras just sending your data everywhere? Obviously there's been controversy with these before with regards to um, them partnering with local police departments and sending video footage to them and privacy invasions. It's in your home. People are watching you. Facebook's getting your data. Crashlytics is getting your data. Everybody, even when you pay for a platform, your data's still getting sold. It's ridiculous. Speaking of paying for a platform, that's what Ford's going to be doing for the upcoming Lincoln electric vehicles. They've announced that they're going to be using Rivian as the base layer of the upcoming Lincoln electric vehicle, also known as a Rivian skateboard platform, which is basically just the bottom half and then they build on top of it. So you got a Lincoln shell on a Rivian electric vehicle. This could be good for the electric vehicle competition market because this would mean that Rivian might have more money to be commercially viable later on down the line. And that would be very beneficial considering the fact that Tesla is the first US auto manufacturer to reach mass production in over 100 years. Getting new car companies starting up would be great. Or it could just mean that Ford's eventually going to buy Rivian and then it's just the giants competing against the giants and Tesla's there standing alone ahead of everybody else. But let's talk about something that is cool that has nothing to do with electric vehicles, but has to do with vehicles, and that is a biometric car nut. Yes, my friends, Ford has announced that they're introducing a program where they take your voice, convert it to some sort of circular sound wave, and then they 3D print that into a security nut that goes onto your wheels so that people can't steal your wheels, and then you have the other pattern where you have the lock key, and then your voice is now on the nut of your car. You're welcome, that's fun. I actually like this. It's a pretty ingenious way of using biometric voice data in something that can personalize the car. That's my car, because it got my voice on it. And my voice is going away from this episode. Don't forget to check out today's video sponsor. And again, big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check them out at the link in the video description to get two months of Skillshare premium for free when you check out the link. And that's it. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Get subscribed, stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. You've just been informed of the tech news. You're welcome. I'll see you later. Bye.